Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. Once again, we're doing a opal stabilization technique. Now this one's a little bit more on the professional grade end of things. We are going to look at using Paraloid. So in particular, this one is Paraloid B44. Now there's a huge family of Paraloids. It's an acrylic resin, but if you have a look at it, it's just a bunch of little pellets is what it comes as. Essentially what we're going to do is dissolve this stuff and then when that solvent disappears, all that's going to be left is this hard acrylic resin. Now Paraloids are a huge family of acrylic resins. There are heaps of them. You'll see like B44. The most common one I think is B72. It's used a lot. Uh, B67 is also very popular. The reason I've chosen B44, even though it's a bit more expensive than the others, the glass transition temperature of this is much higher so b72 is only about 40 odd degrees now i've talked about how hot my shed gets and my shed gets hotter than that and in australia it's not an uncommon number to hit 40 degrees this is all in celsius so i thought because it's going to keep pushing past that glass transition temperature it is going to weaken the stone a bit so b44 on the other hand this one has a glass transition temperature more up around the 60 degrees Celsius, which is huge in comparison and we don't hit days over 60 or I will boil like an egg. So that's what we're going to do. This can be used with vacuum, but we're going to do it without vacuum. And the way to do that is just here. So I'm making one solution of 2% weight per volume. And then I'm going to make one that is 15% weight per volume. We might bump that one up. We'll see how it goes. And to give you an idea of how much that is, 2%. I've already pre-weighed it, 15%. And to do a weight to volume percentage, all you're doing is on your bottle, this is the easiest way anyway, how I normally do it. I've marked the spot here, that's 100 mil. And we just want 2% to be that acrylic resin. And then we're just gonna top it up to the 100 mil and let it dissolve. Same for this one, except we're doing 15%. That's the 100 mil mark just there. Super easy, it's just a percentage per mil volume. Now, what's not simple is how I'm gonna dissolve this. So I'm gonna use acetone. You can use a lot of different solvents, but each of those solvents does have an effect on the end result. There's some great papers out there and I can pop up a few slides and whatnot so that you can uh, find them yourselves. If they're open access, you'll be able to have a read through. It's pretty interesting stuff. This is used a lot in conservation. So a lot of museum grade stabilizations for fossils and stuff uses B72, B44, B67. So they have been extensively studied with a bunch of different solvents. Acetone is probably the most default one. The others can be uh, used, but it does change the properties. Sometimes good, sometimes bad. We're gonna keep it simple. Now this 2%, the non-vacuum work, this 2% is super important. This is gonna do that stabilization, that consolidation of the material. So we can just drop this onto the surface and the 2% should let it penetrate deep in. The problem with using acetone is that the solvent evaporates super fast. So instead of just putting it on top of the stone with a dropper, we're probably gonna have to soak the stone for a little bit, wait for those air bubbles to get out, then we can pull it out. The good thing about this acrylic resin compared to the epoxy is that the solution is reusable. So this won't go bad. As long as we've sealed it, and I'm just gonna use the glass bottle with glass stopper so the acetone doesn't eat it. As long as we seal it pretty well and that volume doesn't drop, it'll be perfectly, perfectly 2% for a long time. You can even top up the acetone if you really think that you're dropping too much. So yeah, completely reversible as well. So if you have a bad result with your stone, you can actually just soak it in acetone and you'll get most of it out. It is hard once it's penetrated the stone, but it's always gonna be hard once it's trapped within a stone. Now, the other thing I should mention, this is not the best way to do it. So to dissolve this stuff normally, you'd use more like a tea bag method. And what you do is you suspend a pouch of this stuff so that it's just touching the solvent below and it'll just slowly diffuse down and dissolve. In my case, I'm gonna to have to constantly give this a bit of a stir. I'm probably gonna put it on a magnetic stirrer and just let it run, because it's gonna take quite a long time for the 15% to dissolve. The 2% should be pretty quick. Anyway, let me get the acetone in here and then we will see you again when it is all dissolved and we'll coat a stone with it. Okay, so it's soaked in the solution for a little while and then I've taken it out and I've dried it just on a piece of foil because it won't stick to the foil. If it ever does stick to whatever you're working with, just give it a, a couple drops of acetone to get underneath it or something and it'll lift straight off. It's, it's not going to glue on. All of this is reversible, so given enough time and enough acetone, you can actually undo the entire process. 
But you can see here, it's a fairly matte finish. This side was face down, so it's got a little bit of puddling, so a little bit of it's on the surface, but it's not too glossy. One thing I did want to try to emphasize and trigger is, see this little bit of white clouding? Now, if this happens, it's not the end of the world. I was actually trying to make it more dramatic and make it happen a lot more, but that little white clouding, if I bring in this pot that I was soaking it in, so you can see it here, I've made it a little bit more obvious. There's a bunch of this white stringy looking stuff. So this will happen if, you take this out of the acetone and paraloid mix and put it out on a bench or whatever and the air around it is humid. When acetone dries, it goes super cold. So the stone gets really cold and any water from the atmosphere will actually just bead onto the surface and water and paraloid do not mix. So as you can see here, this is just the jar that we soaked it in. To clean the jars at the end, all you do is just retrieve any that you want to keep and then just a little bit of residue that's on the walls, instead of letting acetone dry up and it deposit on the walls, dump a bunch of water on it. And that water will actually make it so that the paraloid just sticks to itself and you'll just be able to scoop it all out as you can see here. So it'll come out as this little fine film and it happens almost instantly. You don't really want it to happen on the surface of your stone but even if it does it's not a problem all you need to do to get rid of it is just to wipe over a little bit of acetone you don't need to soak it again otherwise you'll start bleeding out what you've put in it just wipe over it and you'll be able to get rid of that what we're going to do to get a bit more of a glossy coat on the outside is go with the higher concentration so the 15 which i actually made more like 20 percent I put a little bit less acetone in there. So we're gonna chuck that onto the surface and we're gonna paint it on with a paintbrush. That will give it a little bit more gloss. If you want it really, really thick, really, really glossy, like I've shown in a stone like this, if you want that artificial plastic looking top coat, just make it super thick. Paraloid is miraculous. You can do it super thin to use it as a stabilizer like this, but you can make it super thick and actually use it like you would a super glue. It's just not as strong a hold, but it does actually work. You can make it like 80% and it will just squeeze out of a tube and you'll be able to glue stones together and stuff. It's uh, it's pretty cool stuff. But yeah, you kind of want to avoid that. So to avoid all of that white deposits or that white effect, you just want to make sure that the environment that you put this in is not too humid, not too hot, because your stone is going to get cold. There's no way to avoid it. You can maybe slow down the process a little bit just for that initial acetone evaporation, because that will happen even if it's cold. But you don't want it to happen too quickly in a humid area like I tried to recreate here. This front face I thought would go a lot more cloudy, but it didn't. Anyway, now let me grab some brushes and we'll do the final step. I'll also mention that if you feel the weight of this stone compared to the untreated stones, so if I grab a very similar one here, they don't look too different but this one has gained at least 50% weight on top of the other one. And I think it's actually a little bit thinner. It is, it is a little bit thinner and yet it weighs more. So it means you have definitely got some in there, but we're gonna make it even heavier and load it up on the surface. So let me grab some paint brushes and we'll do the final step. Okay, so now we're gonna paint on the Paraloid B44 15 to 20% weight to volume. The only thing to remember is when you're buying paint brushes, Cheap is fine, but make sure you don't get any where the bristles are plastic or there's any kind of glue holding the bristles onto the rest of the stem, onto the handle. Don't know the anatomy of a paintbrush, but hopefully that makes sense. Remember you're painting with acetone as the solvent. It's not the most common solvent for paints. Typically you'd have like mineral terps or something if it's a terps based paint or you're just having straight standard water. In those cases, pretty much any brush will do, but in this case, you will start melting your brush and whatever you melt is gonna end up in your stone and in your solution, so not ideal. This is a natural hair, like a pig's hair. So all we're gonna do is chuck our stone on a little bit of foil, because I don't want it to leach all the way through. Oh, one more thing that I wanted to show you guys, because I want to be able to show you all of the uh, things not to do. If you look here, can you see all of those little white bubbles? They are exactly what you think. They are bubbles. You can see some of them are escaping towards the surface, but because the acetone evaporates so fast, if you create bubbles, you're going to end up trapping bubbles. So when you've got your brush, I've actually packed mine away, but let's pretend this is the brush. Don't go dabbing the bristles onto the stone. You'll just create all of these little air pockets. And as you can see, they will lock in. Some will come up to the surface, but most will just lock in. I've also just realized there's a bristle hair stuck in the 
in the coating there. And you can also see if I just give you the glare across the surface, you can actually get it quite thick. But yeah, just avoid all of these bubbles. Again, it's definitely reversible, so don't panic too much. At this point, all that's needed to fix that up is just to hit it with just some pure acetone and just to use more of a brush like sweeping motion. You don't want to go and jab it otherwise you will create bubbles and those bubbles will not get out. You've got no time for the bubbles to escape. You can't flash a torch over this like an epoxy resin. The acetone will light on fire. I'll see if I can quickly fix it up now. All right. And that's Paraloid B44. Now you could use any of the other Paraloids as well. In terms of the dissolving them and applying them, they're pretty much all exactly the same. All you're looking at as some of the different properties. I could make a thousand videos on this stuff because it can be used for everything. Each of the different Paraloids are a little bit different, but also remember when I mentioned that you could get things like the uh, water interacting poorly, you can actually avoid a lot of that kind of stuff by mixing up different solvents as well. You don't have to use pure acetone. The paper shows a bunch of different ones and a lot of pros and cons for each. It's all a little bit chemistry based, so I won't worry about discussing it here. But just know that you can mix in things like ethanol and stuff and you can change the, change the properties. You can avoid all of that frosting and fogging if you're in a really humid, hot environment. All of that kind of stuff can be uh, manipulated. This stuff can be manipulated a lot. And you can see here, I reckon I'll do another couple coats to get it a little bit more closer to this glossier glossier side otherwise it's a fairly matte finish and that might be one of the downfalls for it to get a nice finish on it a lot of the time you're going to need to play with your concentrations a bit each of the stones this one's super porous so i reckon i need to go closer to 30 percent weight per volume to be able to get a nice shiny even coat on it because this one still even though it's stabilized internally the pores were still fairly open because it was such a high percentage of acetone, you're going to end up still keeping a lot of the porosity of it. So a lot of the first coats of this thicker, thicker 15, 20% was still soaking in. If I give it a little bit of a flash, see how it looks a little bit too matte for my liking. I mean, nothing like the, uh, the side that was just untreated, or at least on the surface. But you can see here, you can still see a lot of those pores. When the acetone vapors leave, it's still going to leave you a lot of the pores. They're not going to be full because remember they were filled, but they were filled with 2% solution. So 98% of that just legged it. But at least if it's a really crumbly little stone, this stuff gets used for wood stabilization before wood turning as well, because it will just at least hold it all together. This could be carved into, we could do any kind of intricate carving and it wouldn't be all grainy and sandy and just crumble apart. So that's where the 2% comes in. But yeah, for the finishing coat, I reckon for the B44 and pure acetone, we're probably going to look at more like a 30% and then I should be able to get this glossier kind of finish across the whole surface. The good thing is, as I showed with all the bubbles around the edges and stuff and all over the face, you can always just keep working it, keep reversing it. You can thin it out, you can thicken it up. You can do all of that. And as long as you've got acetone, you can just keep reworking and reworking. I can completely wipe all of this off again, at least on the surface level and start again from fresh just by using pure acetone. You just have to give it a couple seconds to really re-dissolve it all. And the other thing is I don't have to wait for it now to cure. So there's no curing in this, but you do need the residual solvent to decrease. You need to get that right down because as you can see, just in this corner here, if you just have a look there, see how it's really matte? So I just got my fingernail and just ripped off a section because I haven't left this to get back below the glass transition temperature. Oh, it's kind of starting to get there now. So it's a little bit of a soft plastic and you can peel off the layer. But once I've given this a little bit more time and all I'm gonna do is sit it out in the sun once I've done that, it's it's pretty much rock solid at that point. That is until I add acetone back to it. Even like a small percentage of acetone, the paper before shows exactly what happens to the glass transition temperature and it's a very dramatic decrease. As soon as you get a little bit of residue, residual acetone in there. So what we need to do now is just heat treat it a little bit just for the acetone to come off, which is super easy. And then yeah, you'll end up with your final final glossy stone. I wouldn't rework it after that. If you are going to rework it, you're going to have to do it a little bit differently to what you would with glass or the opals because it is essentially acrylic. It's a plastic. So you've got to take it more like a plastic polish, which is a lot more soft. So that's another stabilization technique you can play around with. Depending on your stone, it's going to be a lot of messing around. On other stones that I've done that were less porous, the 20% was fine. But on this one, I think it's a little bit too thin and it's still seeping in. So I'm going to need to bump that up to like a 30, 30%. 
maybe even higher. But it is super fun stuff to play with if you're comfortable with handling acetone. It's not the worst chemical in the world, it's still a little bit nasty. And of course, all of this can be done with vacuum. In fact, with the vacuum, I would say you can skip the 2%, go a little bit higher, suck it all in, take it out, let it dry, and then do the same thing, coat it with your correct thickness surface coat. Anyway, I've still got another one that is super chemistry based. So the next one I wouldn't really recommend to people. It is essentially creating an artificial opal and letting that get into a stone and then curing and hardening. So you're basically impregnating opal with opal or matrix sandstone with opal. Bit tricky, but also quite fun and quite interesting. Stay tuned for that one. I'll be back with another video in no time. If you want to play around with the paraloids, at least you've got a starting point now and you can mess around with your percentages, see what works for the stone that you're using. But once you move on to different material, you're probably going to have to tweak all your numbers again. And maybe increase your brush quality. I think there's still a bristle in here somewhere. I managed to get rid of most of them. There's one right there. That's a saw blade mark, but that right there is a bristle. And a bunch of little air bubbles still in this bottom corner. So it takes a bit of work. Have fun. Experiment away. I don't think it's going to be the method for me, but it is an option out there. Museums use it all the time. So it's definitely got its place, but I don't know if it's for Matrix. I mean, the stabilization's fine, but for the final finish, you might you might be better off finishing it with something else. So let me get to showing you a couple other options. Catch you around, guys.